Okay, so in this video, uh, what we're going to go through is the link between some of the things we might find uh, with a running assessment and pathology and classic pathologies that you might see. Um, so, Ben, can we uh, let's talk about that? Yeah. So we start with a side view, yeah, which is uh, what we began with the video. We were talking about certain things that you might pick up. So one of the most common one of the most common findings I see when I'm assessing runners in my clinic is that people will overstride. Yeah? So they'll have a low cadence and they'll overstride. And if you see that, quite often that's linked with uh, knee pain. Yeah? So they're overstriding, they're extending out in front of them, they're getting a very heavy heel strike, and that translating up into their knee. Yeah? So that also can be linked with reduced hip extension. So if you are lacking hip extension, then you're going to overstride to compensate for that. So a few pathologies you might see there if you're lacking hip extension, you might be overworking your hamstrings to try and increase that, so you might end up seeing patients with hamstring issues, insertion of tendinopathies and stuff like that. Also, if you're not getting the hip extension, your glutes won't be firing appropriately, so that might have some issues on the anterior knee pain side of things as well. You'll over stride to keep your stride length for certain distance, you'll have a heavy heel strike in your quads, which are most responsible for breaking and shock absorption when your heel hits the ground, uh, will be linked with increased uh, force and pressure for your telephone joint. If we come round to the back, uh, another common observation you'll see is that people's hips are dropping, yeah? so they get a contralateral hip drop. Again, that can be linked with glute med issues, yeah? glute med tendinopathies, lateral hip pain. Quite often that's coupled with that scissoring uh, observation that we mentioned in the last video, so they're crossing over the midline as they run. And again, you see that quite a lot with uh, glute med tendinopathy and with ITV issues. As we come down to the knees, we mentioned again if people are landing with very extended knees, very um, dorsiflexed ankles, coming back to knee issues again, which by far and away knee pain is the most common problem that you'll see with runners. And then if we come down to the ankle, we'll start to talk about pronation and supination. Yeah? So um, excessive pronation is termed as anything over kind of 12 degrees, and it's hard to sort of assess that in clinic. But you can, when you slow it down, see if they're falling into pronation too quickly and remaining in that position. There is some evidence that links that with medial tibial stress syndrome and tibialis posterior dysfunction. Yeah? There's some lower grade evidence that links it with Achilles issues and with patellofemoral pain syndrome as well. Yeah? So um, they're the main pathologies that you will come across with sort of 89% of the runners anyway, and they're the common running dysfunctions that you will normally see that go alongside that. Not always, but a lot of the time. Quite often when I'm taking my subjective, if someone's telling me that they've got knee pain, I'm already thinking that they're possibly uh, running with a low cadence and overstriding, uh, and same if they're coming with lateral hip pain, I'm thinking in my head, oh, maybe they're having a hip drop and a, a scissoring observation on running assessment. So when you start to get the hang of that, you can start to piece it together. It's not the same all the time, but it gives you a good base with which to uh, begin your running analysis from. I think one of the other uh, things we mentioned earlier is your non-specific low back pain type patients with the, yeah, the yeah. hip extension. So if yeah. someone's got lack of hip extension, and then you might well find that they are over um, extending their lower spine to compensate for that, and that can give you that non-specific kind of low back pain when someone runs. So that's another common pathology you might Definitely. see with runners that you yeah, yeah. come in, and it's not it's not that they're um, you know you know you might find their range of motion is, is fine and they're not too too bad with that, but then when they run, they just start to get their back pain. So that's another common one apart from one. You've already mentioned. Yeah, I mean the hip is very often the hip is a silent offender. Yeah, so if you've got a restricted hip joint, it's not that often you'll get hip pain, yeah, unless you're an older runner, but in the majority of my runners, they won't come in with sort of hip joint pain, but the restriction in the hip joint will give them lumbar pain or knee pain because they're having to do these uh, different stride lengths, for example, to compensate for that. So quite often the hip is a big player in their presentation, but it won't be there um, 